Welcome to the Lincoln Center pop-up classroom. My name is Ms. Taryn and I'm a teaching artist at Lincoln Center Education. If this is your first time in the Lincoln Center pop-up classroom, you might be looking around and thinking, hey, wait a minute, is this a cooking show? It's not. In the Lincoln Center pop-up classroom, we make art. We dance, we make music, we make theater, and here we are making visual art. Today, we're doing some printmaking together, like this. We're using materials from our kitchen to make a print, or make a few prints. The way that you make a print is you take the image from one surface and you transfer it to another through pressure. There can be color left over if you're using ink, or today we're going to be using these materials that I got from my fridge. You're gonna be using materials that you got from your fridge, obviously not from my fridge. Um, or people use ink to do printmaking. Sometimes there's no color moved over because a print can also have no color, like a footprint in the sand. The image of your foot, this is a hand, but an image of your foot pressed into the sand leaves a print, it leaves a footprint. Um, but today we will be leaving some marks with these materials, or your materials. Okay, so adults, this lesson is for you too. Please enjoy it, have fun. If you have young people, young artists with you, it'd be great if you can stay in the room to leave some comments in the comment section or your own comments. We'd love to see you engage with the, the lesson. Let's us know that you're having fun and, and that you're there. Um, if you do know somebody who might enjoy this lesson, please share it with them. Other friends or family members, members of your community or, or parent groups, um, the lessons are here always and you can let someone know that they should be coming and checking it out. So let's look at our agenda for today. Um, we had a welcome. Welcome. The next thing we're gonna do is gather materials. I'll tell you about them in a moment. Um, after that, we're going to be experimenting with the materials that you collect. Then we're going to be making specific choices around balance and repetition for a set of prints, a series of prints. We'll talk about the things that you can do after this lesson um, based on what we explore today. And then we'll have a closing. One thing that's super important, because we're using materials today from our kitchen, we must ask permission. So whoever's in charge of the, the um, things in your fridge, the things in your kitchen, make sure you check it out with them and say, hey, can I use these for my art project? And if they say, hey, you're not supposed to play with your food, <laughs> you can say, I'm not playing, I'm experimenting, I'm making art, I'm making uh, aesthetic choices because balance and repetition have to do with the way things look. And that's what aesthetic means. It means how things look. So you're gonna be making some choices around balance and repetition. So let's check out our materials. Anybody who's been in the pop-up classroom with me before knows that I love to repurpose things. Not only because I love that anyway, but also because we're all in our own homes and we all have the things that are available to us right now. I wanna thank Christina at Lincoln Center for the inspiration for this lesson because I love printmaking and I was so puzzled about what I could possibly use if I didn't have ink. And she said to me, oh, I always use ketchup, mustard, and chocolate sauce with my kids at home. So Christina at Lincoln Center Editions, she knows so much about printmaking. I'm just really grateful to her for setting off this lesson because it sent me for my ketchup and my mustard and my chocolate sauce, and I found some more things too. So first thing, paper. We're gonna repurpose, I'm gonna repurpose paper. You can use brand new paper if you'd like, but you can see from the start, I'm repurposing an envelope for my experiments. I'm going to use a piece, two pieces of um, already used copy paper for my series of prints. And then I'm also going to close out by doing a little bit of experimenting with other materials. You can do that as well. 
um, maybe that's one of those next steps. So this is a bubble wrap envelope. I like it because it's kind of cushy and we said that a print is when you move an image over to another surface and you have to press down. So it helps if there's a little um, surface that's a little bit soft. Bubble wrap has that in it already. Um, if you do look at the surface of my desk and have been here before, you'll notice this green thing is totally new. It's to protect my desk because I don't want it to get wet or dirty because I'm going to be using these things. So um, what about those things? Those things, um, we're going to call them, we're going to use a chemistry term. It's uh, suspension. So a suspension is, well, things in the world can take um, basically three different forms. They can be solid, like a rock. Um, they could be um, gas, like the air that we breathe is made up of gases. Or it could be liquid, like water. Um, that's, that's a liquid. So what a suspension is, it's a combination of two of those. It's solids that are suspended in liquids. So um, ketchup isn't like a solid tomato. It's bits of tomato that are suspended in water. So what we're looking for when you guys go to your fridge are things that um, don't, we're not looking for suspensions that have oil. So make sure that the things don't have oil, but you're looking for something that has some color. It's kind of liquidy. Um, it might work for moving an image of something onto another surface. Then we gotta look for the, the, the some things that we're moving the image over. So one thing that um, I've noticed is what you need for one of the things that you're gonna press over, if you just have a fork, that's a-okay. Um, Cause it's perfect. It's perfect, you're perfect. It's got um, areas of positive space and negative space. So the positive space are these little tines. So the ink is gonna stick, or the suspension is gonna stick to the back of these tines, and when I press it down, the negative space is gonna make it so those, um, those marks show up. So positive space is where there's something, like the tine. Negative space is where there's nothing, like the space between the tines. So you're looking for things that um, are like that. Here in my straw, I've got a negative space in the center, a negative space in the center and a positive space on the outside. So that's gonna give me a nice little circle. Here's a rule breaker. This is a chopstick. The chopstick has just a tiny little um, point at the end. So it's gonna still make a really good mark. If it was much bigger than that, it would get all blue, like bleh, and not make a good mark. So tiny little things like that work. This is a small cap. Again, like the outside edge is going to make me have a mark and there's a big negative space in the center. And then I have a bigger, I'm going to have a bigger circle because here's my positive and inside is where there's going to be nothing. It's going to be negative. I thought that this spatula, since it was so fancy and it had such pretty little holes in it, I thought this was going to be an awesome material or object to make an image with. It wasn't because it just had too much positive space and when I put material on there, when I put suspension on there, ugh, it got all like yucky and gross. So not good for the spatula, not gonna use it. Um, what else do you need? You need, I had mentioned these cloths. So this is a dry one. It's just gonna be underneath my paper to give me a little bit of push down kind of surface. Um, this one is a little wet one that I'm gonna use to wipe off my materials. Like you can see, I wiped off my, my cap there, keeping things clean. And then the next thing I need is something that I'm gonna use um, as a palette. A palette is a surface where painters or printmakers, they put their ink or their paint. We're looking for something that is flat, that does not absorb water, um, that's hard. So you could, I used a cutting board. You can use um, like a, the bottom of a, a tray, like a baking tray if it's, if it's nice and flat, or maybe a plate. Just something that is hard and, and um, flat that you can spread out your um, suspension into a little puddle. You could pause the video here and go gather your materials um, and come on back. But if you're watching live with me or just wanna continue, I'm going to make up my palette now after I check to make sure 
that I remembered all of the materials, paper, suspensions, objects from kitchen, two towels, and a surface for a palette. Sounds good. You might also want a pen. I'm going to use a pen to take some notes on my experiments so I know what I like and then I can reuse it afterward. So let's see. The first thing I'm going to do is set up my palette. I said I'm going to use ketchup. I'm going to use mustard. Really, those are most common in our fridge. And if you just had those, that's going to make a perfect kitchen print. Um, you only need a half teaspoon to a teaspoon. And I've gotten permission so I know I can use this mustard. My husband doesn't like this one anyway because it's the spicier one. He likes just straight up yellow, which would make a lovely mark. We just don't have yellow right now. Um, or I could have asked permission. Okay, and then I'm gonna use some chocolate sauce. That looks good. And then I found that hot sauces work really well. And I'm somebody who likes things spicy. So I have a lot of hot sauces. And then I'm in love with this for printmaking. This is tamarind paste. And so tamarind paste, it's nice and dark. It's made from um, tamarind pods. Uh, I'm gonna try and just put a little bit on my palette and see what happens. Okay. And since I have the tamarind on here, I'm gonna start doing what I've done with the ketchup. And that is to smooth it out. I don't want a thick, thick glob to dip my object in. <clears throat> I want a nice low puddle, smooth low puddle. Look how beautiful that is. So gorgeous, spreading it out. Oh, let's see. Mm. It's so sour. Of course, you're printing with food. You can taste your food. Especially the chocolate sauce. It's gonna be the next one I smooth out. Looking good, chocolate sauce. Right? Mmm. -hmm. Yummy chocolate sauce. Okay, I'm gonna spread out my mustard. This mustard, the white reason I like it, it's delicious. Mmm. Good mustard. And then finally, my chocolate sauce. I mean, that's not chocolate sauce. And let's get that hot sauce. Woo! <laughs> That's hot sauce. That's why they call it hot sauce, because it's hot sauce. So now that I have my palette organized just the way I like it, things are nice and low for dipping my um, objects for printing into, uh, I'm gonna test out my colors and see what kind of color I get. I'm going to use my uh, straw. Again, it has that negative space in the inside and a circle on the outside, but I could use any one of my tools for this. So I want to check out how my color works. I'm going to put some of my suspension on, and then I'm going to use repetition. I'm going to repeat three times. One, two, oh, I slid a little bit. Three, I said three, I meant four, four times to see how the color stays. The first one was pretty dark. It does fade, but it holds its color pretty well. The ketchup does on my um, straw. And it's gonna, it's interesting because every suspension has its own relationship with each object. So some objects might work better with other suspensions. So here's my mustard, 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 mustard. And chocolate sauce. It does fade out over time if I'm doing a little bit of noticing. Okay, last one is tamarind and you're gonna see in just one second why this is my favorite at the moment. I have a little bit of, there we go. Okay, here we go. I doubled it up because it wasn't getting much color in there at all. But now um, the, the I'm getting a, a little bit more color. Okay, so I'm going to take some notes about what I used. This is my ketchup. And you can get your pen and do that now, or you can remember and do it later. Mustard, hot sauce. This is my sriracha. Sriracha. I like that word. Cha cha cha.
So down here, I'm going to test my objects so I know what I'm working with. I've already got my cap. Since I started that with ketchup, I'm gonna do ketchup with everything. Uh, my fork. Okay. Here we go. And then hold my paper down as I lift up. Very nice. I'm gonna take it off. I'm gonna do my straw, even though I do have a straw up there. Here's my straw. Nice. That straw makes such a nice mark. Here's my chopstick. Hold it down, nice. And last but not least, my big cap. So my puddle for my of my ketchup is a little bit small. So I kind of have to put this suspension on my object a little bit at a time. Okay, so I'm gonna press, push, put my object down, press, give it a good hard press, and then hold my paper and lift it up. Okay, I love that. That actually turned out really well. Okie doke, so same thing. I'm gonna mark down what I have. So this is my big cap. This is my small cap. This is my straw. My fork. And my chopstick. So now I know how everything works. I know all of my suspensions and what they do, and I know all of my objects and what they do. I can use this information to make choices, aesthetic choices, choices about what my prints will look like. Here's my chart. All of my information from my experiments is here. So I'm gonna put that to the side. If I want to refer to it, I can. And I'm gonna get my papers for my new prints. Like I said, I'm using repurposed paper. You totally don't have to. I'm going to make two prints. It's going to be a series because um, they're going to be related since I'm using the same objects and the same suspensions. For one, I'm going to explore repetition. I'll repeat things. On the other one, I'm not going to have any repetition. Everything will only appear once. One time for each object, one time for each color. On um, one print, I'm gonna work with balance. If we think about balance in the world, it means like with a scale or a teeter-totter when things are right in the middle, right? There's nothing that's heavier than the other. When we think about how we arrange objects on the paper, it means that one side wouldn't have a lot more than the other side. So if there were lots more objects on this side than this side, it would be like so many things. I'm gonna try and spread out my objects um, so that it feels, it feels like everything is like evenly balanced. On my other one, I'm not going to have a balanced composition. There's going to be some point in, on my composition where it feels like heavier than it does on the other side. So maybe all my objects will kind of be over here or something. We'll see how it goes. Um, for both of those, for both of these prints, I'm going to divide it Let's see, I'll divide it this way. So that I have two halves. And I wanna make sure that everything, um, it feels like really even. No, there's not a lot of stuff on one side and, and no stuff on the other side. And here I can repeat. So I'm gonna start with my, I'm gonna start with my tamarind. And I can be really, oops, look at that, I got it on my finger. I could be really, um, don't do that with your regular paints, obviously. These are things from the kitchen, I can lick them, but don't get in that habit, and then when you're working with paints. Okay, so here's one on this side. And I can do the same thing on the other side, and I know that that's gonna be balanced.
they're exactly the same. I'm just gonna clean that off. Um, I can play with, use, or experiment with my fork, make a mark with my ketchup. I'm gonna turn it upside down and I'm gonna go diagonal. I'm gonna actually do that same shape, but balance doesn't mean you have to do the same exact shape. I can make more of these marks with the um, with the fork because I can repeat here. This part is symmetrical. If I fold it in half, it's the same on both sides. This is more like repetition than it is symmetrical. My students from 161, PS 161 would know this. If this was exactly the, um, the mirror image, they'd face the opposite way. The forks would be coming in like this. It's not a mirror image. Okay, so let's see. I'm gonna make some dots. I'm gonna make some dots with the hot sauce. I could just make dots all day. I shouldn't make dots all day though. I gotta do something with this lesson. It can't be forever. So I'm gonna move this a little bit differently. Uh, I'm not gonna put it exactly where it was because it'll still be balanced even if it's not exactly in the same place. And I'm gonna use my big cap in a way so that I can put two colors on it. I've got chocolate sauce color and I've got, what is a hot sauce color. Cool, okay. Do I use everything? Chopsticks, straw, oh I didn't use the straw. Let me make a couple marks with my straw and then I'm gonna move on to my other print. So straw, what would you like to do, my friend? Oh, I would like to use some tamarind. Oh, okay, thanks, straw. I always like to do what you what you want. So let's put some inside. Maybe a couple outside. Couple inside, 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 inside. And last ones. One, two, three, and one, two. Okie dokie. Ooh, did I get chocolate sauce? No, I didn't. Phew. Oh, I thought I got chocolate sauce on my print. Well, I do have chocolate sauce on my print. <laughs> okay, so let's see. If I put this on a, a scale, would this, um, would this weigh evenly? Yeah, there's the same stuff on one side and then on and on the other. See, um, it might not look exactly the same, or it might be flipped around, but the same stuff is on this side as is as is on that side. Did I repeat things? Yeah, I repeated my colors. I repeated my objects. So this is my balanced and repetition print. So now I'm gonna do um, a no balance, no repetition print same point of balance so right down the center i'll fold this paper right down the center you don't have to fold it you can just know that the center is what you're working with i'm just making a mark so that i know that it's there okay so i've got five colors five objects and i'm gonna have the, this be not balanced so whatever's over here might be heavier than what's over there so um i'm going to put this guy Wow, I got a lot of chocolate on it. Let me see, there's a little space there. Thank you very much, fork and chocolate sauce for working together as you do. Okay, so I'm gonna put my fork, oh, it slid, it's okay, here. If I did start to move this around and not just kind of like pressing down and lifting up, 
I would begin to be kind of painting rather than printmaking. Printmaking really isn't moving things around. It's pressing things in one place and lifting them up. Okay, I've got that one. And I'm gonna put this guy over here. So now I have two things, two objects. And this guy, do to do to do, hot sauce. Um, I'm gonna put this guy over here somewhere. Maybe, hmm, maybe like right here. Okay. And then what do I use? I still have mustard. Let me get a mustard going here. realize I've got one other thing that I can do here. So I've used all five and I've used all five, but one thing you can try out is mixing up your colors. And I can use this side. That's gonna give me a nice little line. And I'm gonna put it right here. So if I look here, I've got my print, and I can decide how it goes. Does it go this way, does it go that way? But if I look at my line, it's heavier on one side than it is on the other. Or do you like it this way? You can tell me which way you like it better. Fork up or fork down. Here. Um, very lightweight and this would be heavy. So if we put this on a scale, it'd be like, oh, I'm so heavy over here. Cool beans. So now what you could do, that's it for our balanced and our repetition prints. But then we gotta look at them. We gotta notice them and see our choices. Your next step, there's a couple possibilities. Your next step could be to decide what you like in your um, balanced print and repetition print and what you like in your not balanced and not repetition print and take those, take two of those things, one you like here, one you like here, and explore them in a new print. So you can add to your series and make a new print. Another thing that you could do is you got all of these things, I got all of these things from my kitchen. So this is a kitchen print. You could go look for objects in other areas of your house that might have interesting positive and negative spaces. Like, I went to the place where I keep some toys and I found this bubble blower. It has five holes for blowing bubbles. What it can do is it, every time I dip this in, I'm gonna get five dots in one. Check it out, five dots in one. So remember I said I was gonna experiment with my bubble wrap. If I dipped my tamarind, let me see what I'm gonna get here. Okay. Love it, it's gorgeous. <laughs> okay, so um, I could go look for other objects. I bet Legos would work real well. I don't know, maybe not, it depends. It's gonna be a real, um, it, it depends what suspension you use um, because they do have that kind of like more solid surface than a negative certain having a negative surface um, or a negative space uh, another thing that you could do I thought about this lesson when I was looking at the work of Willie Cole and he uses a household object and iron to make his prints and sometimes he puts ink on it and sometimes he makes a print with the heat of the iron burning you could go take a look at his work or other printmakers and be inspired by them. So those are three new, three next step possibilities for you. To make that new print, to try new objects and new materials to print on, or to go look at other printmakers and see what they do, studying some works of art. Um, but that's it for us for today. If you enjoyed this lesson, um, do it again and again and again. Play with this printmaking again and again and again. Share this lesson with your friends so that they can enjoy it too um, with other uh, adults or um, communities and parent groups. 
know that these lessons are here for you all the time. I hope you spend more time with me in the Lincoln Center pop-up classroom, Ms. Taryn, sometime in the future, but between now and then, I hope that you dance with Deb and Ms. Yvonne and that you make theater with Ms. Mixie and Mr. V, that you make music with Ms. Ashley and Mr. Damien, and that you make more visual art with Ms. Barbara. Enjoy the Lincoln Center pop-up classroom. We make it for you. Until I see you again, be well.